Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. As a part of my table build, I had to do an epoxy coating over the entire surface of the table, which is different than a river table and followed slightly separate processes. So today, I wanna show you how I got this beautiful finish on this table and kind of walk you through the different steps that I had. This is the first one that I've ever done, so there's a lot of finagling and a lot of figuring it out, but there's a lot of good lessons learned that I came out of it, and I hope you guys learn a little bit too. All right, let's get going. I am using the Super Clear Tabletop Epoxy, which is a one-to-one -one epoxy that I had recommended by um, Blacktail Studios here in Portland. And he had some really good results with their deep pour, and so I figured I could use their tabletop version um, the idea that we're going to be going for on this one again is just a seal coat So I'm going to make what I think is the right amount in here um, It's a little bit hard for me to calculate on the seal coat because the seal coat's not really a uniform thickness um, But I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get that and then I'm literally just going to use my hands to spread it all the way around and make sure that it gets to the right spots um, Yeah, making sure not to go into the edges not to go off the edges and not to go into the c-channel areas Alrighty, let's get it going. Well, my time lapse totally cut out when I was only partway through this guy right here, so sorry about that. Um, but one of the things that I learned as I was going through is that in order to get a, a thin coat, uh, using your glove is pretty difficult unless you're in a very warm environment where it spreads easily. I am just a hair cooler than they recommend right now, so it was quite thick. So what I ended up doing was using both the 1 8 inch scraper, but I didn't really want to get 1 8 inch grooves all the way through this because um, that might make my coat just a little bit too thick because that's what I'm expecting for my float coat. So what I did is I took the popsicle stick and I basically scraped it across the top like a squeegee to get it to all the little places and then just used my glove at the end to kind of touch up the uh, edges. And that seemed to work really, really well. So I'm impressed by that and uh, we'll definitely be using the trick again to get a thin coat especially when the epoxy is too thick to spread but now i need to crank up the heat in my shop because it is going to be getting very cold tonight and then i'm going to go through with a torch to try and pop any of the miscellaneous bubbles get rid of any of the little tiny features or ridges just kind of reduce the surface tension so that it smooths out into a nice even finish Okay, and with that, everything on the back is done um, and in its full configuration. The only thing I need to do is to put the C-channels in and then flip it over and we can continue doing work on the front. Um, again, this backside is not going to be the mirror pretty finish uh, like we're gonna be getting on the front because we're only doing the seal coat right now whose sole purpose is to make sure that moisture and humidity can't come through the backside nearly as quickly so that we don't get a differential between the front and the back. But um, oh man, I see, I just can't get over how much of this maple just pops when you put the epoxy on top of it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> anyways, okay, so I'm gonna let this guy sit for, I think it's 18 hours, no, 24 plus about 36 hours. So I'm gonna let this guy sit for about 36 hours before I flip it over and do the float coat on the front. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in about 36 hours. Okay, sorry for the background noise with uh, the fans and everything going. It is very chilly in the shop right now and I'm trying to keep it warm. Right now we're looking, I don't know if you can see it, it is 61 degrees in the shop right now. And I am just having a bear of a time keeping it up because right now we've got a cold snap in Oregon. So the high today is 29 degrees. So I'm gonna uh, delay doing the epoxy a little bit because there's more risk of it going poorly if I can't keep the shop up to temperature. And now that I've got the ability to get the C-channels installed, I'm gonna go ahead and just clamp those down to keep it from warping and bending too much. Um, and then worry a little bit less about how um, how it looks in the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the C-channels installed for you guys real fast and then uh, pick it up when the temperature gets a little bit warmer and it's a little bit easier to keep the shop at temperature. All right. 
ready. Here's what that looks like with all of those installed. And I could totally hear it creaking just a little bit as I cranked down those center ones. Um, and again, I didn't really crank them down that hard. I just got them snug and all the way across the surface, um, it looks like it just flattened everything out. So this should now be dimensionally stable, both with the breadboards at both ends and with these C channels through the middle. Plus the humidity in my shop is not changing that much, even though it is getting colder, which should limit the amount of uh, uh, movement the wood has. But otherwise I am going to hit the hibernate button on this and come back to you guys in a few days so that we can get the rest of this done. Oh, and because we are still technically below the 24 hour mark on this epoxy for the back, I am trying to bring the shop up to temperature enough that it has a chance to fully cure because if it gets too cold, the cure kinetics just slow way the heck down. So giving this guy a little bit of time up at temperature, but um, otherwise we are hitting pause. Okay, here we are guys, two days later and it is much, much warmer outside. Um, I was looking at the temperature and it was down at 25 degrees outside and even though I had two space heaters running in my shop that guy and another one back here I could still only keep the shop at about 45 degrees and even if I tried to feed the fire it just literally would not keep the shop up to temperature but now with just barely feeding the fire and having the space heaters on it is a balmy 64 degrees in the shop so I'm gonna try and get that up a little bit warmer, but while I'm getting the shop a little bit warmer so that we can do the epoxy work, I need to flip the table over, route around the edges, and then I need to clean up all of the debris around my shop so that there is little risk of anything getting into the epoxy finish from getting kicked up or blown or anything. Um, so I'm gonna go through, flip the table over, route it, and then start cleaning this place up so that we can get ready. Alrighty guys, here we go. Shop is up to temperature. Everything is vacuumed off. The last step that I'm going to do is wipe down the entire center portion with mineral spirits, both to get the last bits of the dust off, but also to strip any residual oil that is from this finish off um, and make sure that nothing is coming off so that we keep the color fast and the epoxy can stick beautifully. Again, for like the nine billionth time during this project, this thing looks so nice. I'm so excited for the epoxy to get on here. As you can see, the mineral spirits, after we washed it all down, I got a massive amount off the rag. I already threw it into the wood stove to make sure that it couldn't combust on the floor. But the color was totally fast all the way through. I didn't get any color off the stain portion, which is a really good sign that says all of the stain has saturated and penetrated into the wood and that none of it's left on the surface that's gonna be able to get stripped off. But then all of the dust that I got from the walnut all the way around the perimeter was m just heavy, 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 heavy as can be. The entire t-shirt rag was basically black by the time I was done with it. So that is a good note that even if you vacuum off the entire surface, it does not mean that you've got all the dust and wiping with a tack cloth or mineral spirits and a lint-free rag to make your own tack cloth um, should be able to get all the dust off the surface there. So now I need to wait for the mineral spirits to get volatilize and come off and evaporate out. It just takes a little bit of time to do that. You can already see that it's happening in the walnut in different places so I'm gonna let this guy sit for probably an hour or so keep gently feeding the fire I have all of the fans off in my shop to prevent dust from kicking back up after cleaning everything up um, and the shop is now almost at 70 degrees um, which is just beautiful that's what I had done previously it's on the low end of the temperature but I'm okay with that because it gives me a little bit more working time and as long as I can keep it there it means that the epoxy should cure it's just going to take a little bit of time so I may be closer to the five hour mark before reapplying as opposed to the two hour mark so I will touch back with you guys in about 30 minutes to an hour when all of this has evaporated um, otherwise I'm going to grab some lunch and I will see you guys soon Alrighty, folks after a good lunch I am all fueled up and ready to go First coat that we're gonna do is a seal coat all the way across. And then on the underneath side, I need to go through and reach underneath with my gloved hand and just touch base with where the seal coat hit the bottom so that I make sure that I seal it up all the way around. Um, otherwise, pretty easy. My plan is to use some of these spreaders right here to make sure that I get a nice even coat all the way across the surface. That's how I'm gonna spread the epoxy all the way around. And uh, because of the amount of working time I have, if I don't make enough, I can always make a little bit more. Um, but I'm just gonna make sure I get a good, nice, thin coat even all the way across 
Um, and yeah, because epoxy is hard to work with, I'm going to time lapse you guys over as I'm going through it so that you can see it from the outside and then we'll talk through it in the end. Alrighty, let's get going. Oh, as you can see, I also threw painter's plastic all over the ground here so that I could catch any of the excess drips that were coming off of the table if there are drips because as much as I would love to have an epoxy floor, it's not this kind of epoxy floor that I would like to have. Here we go guys, seal coat of epoxy on. You can see in this reflection that what I still need to do is go through and pop all the bubbles with my blowtorch. Um, overall, that squeegee worked phenomenally for getting that epoxy spread all over the surface and it was nice and even all the way through, pretty much bubble free, except for what's coming through the surface now. And it doesn't look like it's even across, but again, the goal of this coat is just to seal the wood so that when I put the next coat of epoxy on, bubbles don't come up and through and we get a nice even bond all the way across the surface. Um, man, I am so excited with the way that this looks right now. Again, it looks kind of awful right here when we're looking this direction, but this is the seal coat. That is the purpose of the seal coat. I'm um, trying to get around underneath the bottom. The glove worked really well. Um, so spreading it all the way across the surface was super fast with a little tiny squeegee that I have down here. Um, and then I just went through and I finished off the edges and underneath the bottom with uh, the gloved hand. And that worked really nicely for just getting it around the corner. Um, but yeah, overall that worked sweet. So over the next two to five hours, I'm gonna come through here and torch this periodically, make sure that there's no major bubbles forming, make sure that there's no major issues. Um, I may need to figure out something to do with this crack right here because it didn't take the epoxy like I expected it to. It just kind of fell right through. Um, same thing with this one. So we'll see what exactly that looks like when I get done. Um, see if I've got any other ideas for how to seal those up. But I'm going to go through torch this for the next couple of hours. And then when this reaches bar room floor after a college beer party or beer garden tackiness, as said literally by the directions of Super Clear, we're going to go ahead and do the float coat all the way across. Okay, I am about two hours into this, about an hour and 45 minutes actually into this. And I have been coming back every 20 minutes to go through, retorch the top, make sure that any major bubbles are out of there. As you can see, there aren't uh, any obvious major bubbles. There's still the ripples in it uh, all the way across the surface. But again, I'm not really worried about that because the float coat will fill in all of those gaps. Um, I did stop using my wood stove because it was getting too warm at that end of the table and curing the epoxy too fast over there. And then I switched back to using space heaters, but it is now getting to the point where I, uh, it's getting pretty tacky and hard to clean up the drips off the side. So I am going to now let this sit and I'm gonna check back in 45 minutes to see if it is uh, barroom floor tacky ready for the next coat. So I'll see you guys in about 45 minutes. Here we go, it has been how many hours later? Six o'clock right now. I think we started at about two o'clock ish. So we are looking at four hours on the dot before we start the float coat. Now on the float coat, I'm gonna be making a little bit more than I did previously because this was basically just enough to get it around the front. And then I'm gonna be using one of these trowels which has one eighth inch notches up there at the top. And what this allows me to do is as I spread it all the way across, the surface tension will shrink it back together, but it leaves a uniform thickness of about one eighth of an inch or a little bit less than one eighth of an inch. But uh, similar to when I was doing the float coat, I am going to time lapse a good chunk of it as I'm trying to get it spread to make sure that I get everything mixed together properly and put out properly. Uh, one of the things that I did learn during the first, uh, the sample phase when I was making the different samples with the different stains is that I still need to be careful not to trowel too hard when I'm using the spreader because you can gouge the layer previously because it's tacky but it's still soft. Yeah. Siri decided to chime in, uh, but it's still soft. So it's still soft in certain places, especially where it's a little bit thicker on the seal coat. And so you do have the ability to gouge it. So you do want to be gentle as you're scraping it across the front. Um, and then I'm not going to try and overwork it, but I'm going to pour a massive amount right in the middle, um, a massive amount more right in the middle, and then I'm going to slowly bring it to the edge. And then if I need to make more, I'm going to make more because this has plenty of time to set. I mean, you saw it in this one. I mean, I am at how many hours again? 
four hours, wow, okay. You have plenty of time to go through and make another batch if you need to make another batch because I really wanna make sure that when I get it to the edges, I've got a good flow going over. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Here we go, sorry for the uh, pitter pattering rain in the background, we just hit regular Oregon winter after it was frozen. Uh, you can see that this is now starting to really take shape. You can see a couple of areas where I've got some uh, non-uniformity in my height or otherwise. Um, but overall, this looks really, really good. So I'm gonna keep popping some bubbles. There was a few larger cracks that I had that were still trying to fill up. And so I'm getting some bubbles coming through there that the seal coat did not patch up. Um, so I'm gonna keep touching up on those with the torch, but overall, I'm gonna mostly let this guy sit. And then I will probably end up needing to do a second coat on this guy um, just to clear up some of these non-uniformities. You can see that line that moves right across there. Um, that may level itself out, which is why I'm being a little bit patient with it. Um, but overall, that float coat went super, super well. That spreader worked really well. And uh, one of the things that I learned is, so I can scrape up on the side in order to get the kind of self-leveled or even distribution on the side. And it does come out nicely, but it works even better if you just run the trowel right along the edge and basically leave a fat lip of the epoxy to just dribble down on its own. You get a really nice, nice uh, overflow on that edge and it just looks beautiful. So overall things are coming together and uh, I'm going to keep touching this up periodically with the torch and just checking, trying to wipe up these drips as much as I can so that I don't have a ton of sanding that I need to do in the end. Um, and then I will probably end up putting another coat on it tonight, um, but I will let you guys know in just a second. Okay guys, here we are at the, what would it be, six to 11, five hour mark, and the coating is in a very, very, very sticky, but not quite uh, just tacky stage. And I do need to put one more coat on there. As I was looking at it more, you can see with the light in the background right here, there's a whole bunch of bubbles that came up through this guy right here, through both layers. Um, but it is 11.30 at night right now, and I don't think I'm going to be able to wait long enough for this to get to that barroom tacky so that I can put another coat on this. Um, but luckily with epoxy, there is a second option, which is wait a full 24 hours for it to uh, cure and then we'll sand it with 120 all the way across the surface, clean it up and then layer another epoxy uh, coat on there. Um, the only difference between the two is that when you're doing it like this, where you're trying to wait for it to get to that tacky stage before you lay the next layer on, that is when you're getting a chemical bond between layers. And so they're actually cross-linking between layers as opposed to uh, this one that I'm going to do where I wait at least 24 hours for the epoxy to cure and then come back and sand it where you get a mechanical bond because you sand up that top layer so that the epoxy can grab onto the layer that was just beneath it. Not really any issues with either one. But what that should allow me to do is let all of this set and then I can go through and I can sand out any of the minor imperfections that we have across here, see if I can't get these bubbles um, that are coming up over here to uh, be addressed. See if you can't see it better with this. Yeah, you can see some more of them right there. So see if I can get some of those addressed. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna hit pause for 24 hours, but for you guys, it will be two seconds as always. And I will see you in a second. Okay, so a little bit more than 24 hours later, I think I'm looking at the two, two and a half day mark because that was at 11 o'clock. So I had part of a night somewhere in there. Um, but you could hear the rain in the background on that last clip and holy cow, did we get a windstorm. Um, the lighting may look a little bit different in here because I had to hang this guy up in my shop because as I said, I've got dusty issues in the shop. And so when it was windy and this was still tacky, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get crap falling from the roof into my epoxy finish, which 
by and large worked. I still ended up with dust in the finish, but that's going to come out because of other reasons. So um, now that I'm at the two and a half day mark, I need to go through and I need to scuff this up so that we can form a mechanical bond between the layer of epoxy that I'm going to put on here and the epoxy that's already on. And in that process, we should be able to take out some of these defects that uh, popped up, like one, that seam right there. Two, you can see the little tiny blip right there. And then down here, I don't know if I didn't wait long enough on the seal coat, but all of those bubbles um, that you can see on this board right here, those just kept percolating up and through. And that was kind of a huge pain in my butt. So I'm hoping that this next seal coat will get over the top of those, seal those in, um, make sure that they basically look non-existent. I'm hoping that the epoxy is thin enough that it can, all of these bubbles are popped, they just never came back together. So I'm hoping that when I go through and fill it in that will actually fill in. I may need to play with it a little bit um, to get the epoxy to fill in there, but that is fine. So again, general process is for the super clear, you need to go over it with anywhere from 220 to 320 grit per their website after it has reached a hard state. And in this case, I am at a hard state, uh, ready to go. So I am going to sand all of this down with 220 because that's what I have. Um, and then when you get done, you need to wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. And per their recommendation, it is of at least 90% concentration. So I had to run to the store and get some 91% concentration isopropyl alcohol because um, they had 70% and 91. So I got 91. So wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and then we should be able to write we should be ready to spread another layer. Okay, let's quickly go through, sand this down, and then we'll take a look at it um, after we've wiped it down so that you can see the finish, because based on what I've seen online, it's gonna get a lot less beautiful than this before we put the next coat on. So one, one last glimpse of the beautiful, shiny, um, even if it is defect-filled layer. Alrighty, let's get going. Oh, and I forgot to say this, but when you're sanding epoxy, you always wanna wear PPE in general when you're doing woodworking. You absolutely wanna make sure that you're wearing PPE when you're sanding down the epoxy because this is the kind of dust you don't wanna be getting in your lungs. So I'm gonna be throwing a respirator on um, and yeah. Okay, let's go. guys sanded and isopropyled off it is smooth and clean as can be and we're gonna get ready to pour this next coat uh, rinse and repeat on the drill as before I'm gonna go ahead and spread this around and uh, one of the changes that I'm gonna make this time through is that rather than scraping up on the sides I'm going to let it run freely over the sides because um, that seemed to produce a better finish last time alrighty let's hit it again go guys that coat did the trick and in fact I think I may have found a better way or I don't think I ever want to do one of the chemical bond methods again because man it was so nice to apply that finish to already cured epoxy the bottom was rock solid I didn't have to worry about uh, gouging into it at all because it was still soft and that either means I just need to wait a little bit longer um, or I'm just gonna keep on doing it this way and just letting it cure and sand because holy cow this looks absolutely incredible it was so easy to spread across and none of those defects came up and through um, the only bubbles that i have in the surface are from the uh, mixing that i did um, there's nothing coming up from the base layers uh, a couple of the bubbles that we had here the problem area i just went in with a brad nail and filled in those little pockets because the surface tension was just enough that it wouldn't let the epoxy in but you can't even see them now um, i mean they are totally totally gone at this point um, so yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of rippling with the epoxy that I may want to try and polish out after the fact, but otherwise I'm going to keep coming back every 10 minutes, confirm that there's no bubbles. I will probably still torch it, um, every 10 minutes to make sure that any minute bubbles that are trying to come up from the mixing process die entirely, but then I'm just going to let this sit and oh golly guys, I'm so excited with how this is turning out. 
Okay, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, here we go guys. Three hours in and we are just about at the point of no return for fixing different blemishes on the surface. Really, there's just a couple of bubbles that I have fixed throughout the course of this process. And at the beginning I was pulling out um, like a couple of flecks of hair and dust that just happened to find their way in. Um, I'm pretty sure it's because you can hear the wind and because, well, my shop is dusty. So there are certain things that I'm not going to be able to prevent. Um, but at this point, uh, I'm not really able to pull anything out of the finish and still fix the finish because it is setting up well enough. So I am going to give it a break. I will come back in a couple of hours to show you guys where it's at. Um, but otherwise, we're going to let this cure. And then to get any of the other miscellaneous defects, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to polish this. But I'm going to polish it in place um, so that during transit, if there's any scratches or otherwise they get onto it, we can polish those out at the same time. But okay, I know that I keep on saying this, but I am so excited with how this turned out. I mean, just look at that mirror finish as we come across this. Holy cow, man. Holy cow. 